thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to join us. With the recent events in Charlottesville, Virginia, we have been processing the pain and confusion like many of you have. After sitting down as the pastors of Transformation Church and spending time in prayer, we knew in our hearts and our spirits that a voice must be heard and a stand must be taken. You see, in times like this, we often hear Christian cliches that are not beneficial. For example, many would say in light of Ephesians 6 that we should just pray. Or, there is only one race, the human race. Or, uh, God does not see color, so we shouldn't see color. We should be colorblind. These cliches are not helpful to the problems we are currently dealing with, especially for our minority brothers and sisters, primarily because many of them are wrestling against both flesh and blood and principalities and powers. I would compare it to how anyone would respond if they found themselves instantly surrounded by fire and they were being burned. With this pain in mind, they are running quickly towards help and away from hurt. As this is happening, two things are taking place. One, their screams of pain often create fear and misunderstanding to those not being burned. We may not be feeling the pain as badly, if at all, and their natural reaction to run the other way makes some uncomfortable. Someone is running and screaming, and since we don't understand why, they obviously must have a problem. Two, sometimes in an attempt to run away from the pain and get away from the current situation, they bump into other people. This, again, tends to cause offense. Nobody appreciates being bumped. We believe it to be an intentional act of force. This is often what is happening as a reactionary result of trying to simultaneously process their pain and find a safe place to heal. Inevitably, people that are around and don't understand and don't see the fire may get bumped, even if they have the best of intentions to help. We must give people time to hurt, time to process. We must also do so without trying to prove a point or make a provoking statement. When the time does come, let it be across a table, not across the internet. So what do we do? We must make a clear denunciation against any form of white supremacy and any other form of racial superiority. Any idea that a man of a different skin color is of lesser or no value is a disgusting anti-gospel, anti-Christ statement and position. The Imago Dei, the image of God, was established in man from the beginning, and we are all image bearers of God, as explained in Genesis 1. We need to discuss this ideology because the issue is more gospel-centered than political. We must be as proactive about assembling a voice and addressing the racial problem in our country under the biblical guise as we are assembling a voice and addressing the abortion issue and traditional marriage issue. To our majority brothers and sisters, I have spoken with many of you personally. Here's what we know to be the next steps in this time. First is courage. We must stand for the love of our minority brothers and sisters even in their absence. We must fight for the equality of each and every person in our communities, regardless of their appearance, class, or color. More importantly, we must have the courage to stand against people that may look more like us that are degrading, attacking, and standing against our minority friends and family. Second, compassion. We must show compassion and empathy even in light of not understanding. You may not view the world as a minority, but you can listen with an attempt to understand and empathize. To our minority brothers and sisters, we have spoken with many of you personally and are here to tell you that as a church, we are here to empathize with you. Here's what we know to be the next steps. First is grace. We're going to ask you to extend some grace to the majority as we aim to relearn a more accurate American history. Many people in the American majority are having to learn that an issue that many of us honestly believed had been put to death decades ago is still alive. Many people are not able to see the truth and reality that racism still exists. Second, relational trust. Know the character of the man and woman sitting next to you at Transformation Church by opening yourself up to a relationship. Maybe start with small steps, but aim to work together with your majority brothers and sisters through conversation to create enlightenment. Please don't write off the majority friends that can't yet see the world through your lens. Help them. Take time to go to coffee. If you don't agree with them, aim to learn and teach. This is important for every one of us to understand. I'm reminded of the dress that took social media by storm not too long ago. Different people saw the same dress as either white and gold or blue and black. Depending on how you saw the photo, your answer and response was different. 
Many people were adamant about what color the dress was, and others were confused because they couldn't understand how someone saw something so drastically different in the exact same picture. But they did. Obviously, the issue of race in our country is more painful, with more complexities, and will require a more in-depth conversation than that of a dress. In addition to this, there is a clear line of error in this racial problem, especially addressing the incident in Charlottesville. What we aim to accomplish with this analogy is to show you that how you view this problem changes what you see. We need to be prepared to help others see what we see and be ready to listen and attempt to see what we do not see. As pastors, we are honored that many nationalities and ethnicities choose to call Transformation Church their home. We aim to be a lighthouse on a hill to shine the light of the gospel for those around us to see. Sometimes the light is to show you what to go towards. Sometimes the light is to show you what to stay away from. Nonetheless, we want to be a light in the world's darkness. So thank you again for your time. We pray that God would instill grace, boldness, courage, and relationships to navigate these issues with the Bible as our compass. God bless you.